Happy Tuesday, everybody. February 8th. I am Jamie. I am here to read you your daily meditations to get your day started in a positive way. I hope you all are doing well today. Thank you for joining me. Um, let's start with our reading from The Language of Letting Go by Melanie Beatty. Usually I start with our Just for Today by Narcotics Anonymous, but we're going to switch it up a little bit. If you have either of these books and you want to read along, that would be awesome. We are on page 38. Letting go of guilt. Oh boy, this is going to be a, a good reading. Feeling good about, excuse me, ourselves is a choice. So is feeling guilty. When guilt is legitimate, it acts as a warning light, signaling that we're off course. Then its purpose is finished. Wallowing in guilt allows others to control us. It makes us feel not good enough. It prevents us from setting boundaries and taking other healthy action to take care of ourselves. We may have learned to habitually feel guilty as an instinctive reaction to life. Now we know that we don't have to feel guilty. Even if we've done something that violates a value, extended guilt does not solve the problem. It prolongs the problem. So make an amend, change the behavior, and let the guilt go. Today, God, help me to become entirely ready to let go of guilt. Please take it from me and replace it with self-love. That's a really important reading. I really value that reading. I love that reading. Although, as I was reading it, I started to think about some things in my life that I feel guilty for. And um, it's not always that cut and dry, as this reading says, you know? Make an amends, change your behavior, and then let the guilt go. Sometimes you're not able to make that amend. Um, you know, the situation is just not that cut and dry, but and there's nothing we can do. And it just, I feel the guilt in my chest and it doesn't feel good. Um, personally, I have not dealt with that guilt yet and everything else that comes along with this personal situation. Um, so when it does come to mind, I just literally shake my head and start thinking of something else because it's way too painful to think about. Um, and I hope someday that I can heal that. So if any of you all have a similar situation, just know that you're not alone. It's a shitty situation and um, sometimes it's not that cut and dry and there's nothing we can do about it. So sending my love to everybody who's going through the same thing. Just wanted to share that little, you know, it's not that cut and dry sometimes. Moving over for Just for Today by Narcotics Anonymous. Over on this book, we're on page 40. And the reading today the, the uh, I'm sorry, the title of today's reading is What is a Sponsor? What is a Sponsor? You know, that nice person with whom you've had coffee at your first meeting. That generous soul who keeps sharing recovery experience free of charge. The one who keeps amazing you with the stunning insight regarding your character defects. The one who keeps reminding you to finish your fourth step, who listens to your fifth step, and who doesn't tell anybody how weird you are. It's pretty easy to start taking all of this stuff for granted once we're used to someone being there for us. We may run wild for a while and tell ourselves, I'll call my sponsor later, but right now I have to clean the house, go shopping, chase that attractive, and so we end up in trouble, wondering where we went wrong. Our sponsor can't read minds. It's up to us to reach out and ask for help. Whether we need help with our steps, a reality check to help us straighten out our screwy thinking, or just a friend, it's our job to make the request. Sponsors are warm, wise, wonderful people, and their experience with recovery is ours. All we have to do is ask. Just for today, I am grateful for the time, the love, and the experience my sponsor has shared with me, and today I will call my sponsor. 
Okay, so for those of you who don't know what a sponsor is, because it didn't actually give the proper definition, a sponsor is somebody who you usually find in an NA meeting that um, has some time under their belt. I believe you cannot be a sponsor unless you have at least one year. I could be wrong, but you have to have a, cer a certain amount of time. I know that. Um, and it is somebody that you relate to, that you want what they have, you listen to them in meetings and you really resonate with them and you think it could be a really good role model for you in your recovery. So what you do is you approach that person and you ask them if they are um, open for sponsoring someone. That's first and foremost, because if they're not, then you have to pick someone else. But um, if they are, then you, you know, ask them if they could be your sponsor. And what they do for you is um, they're that person to be there for you if you want to use or if you need a ride to a meeting or um, if you have questions. They help you work the steps. It's kind of like a big sister or a big brother, depending. Usually you don't cross genders, though. So I'm a woman. I would pick a woman it's suggested to do it that way for obvious reasons. If you're a man, you pick a man. So it's kind of like an older sibling to help you with the ropes of recovery when you're trying as a new person in recovery. That's what a sponsor is. So um, I have only had one sponsor in my life and it was, in, it was when I was in rehab. And we used to go to outside meetings. So yeah, we would have in-house meetings with just the girls in the house. But then I think it was once a week we used to go to like a real meeting in town somewhere. And um, I, you know, met this girl. She used to be at all of the meetings and I just really liked her and I asked her to sponsor me and she agreed. Um, she was a lovely person and she always was there for me, but I didn't quite feel that connection, that click. Um, so if you find that you run into that yourself. It's no shame at all to say, you're lovely, thank you so much, but I think I'm at a different point in my recovery and I'd like to choose someone else. That's not looked down on at all. So if you're in that situation and you feel like you wanna switch your sponsor, that's totally fine. Um, so yeah, that's it. Let's do our bonus reading now. 365 days of kindness. So let's see where we're at for February 8th. Give it back. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who has need. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 28. Yeah, I have no idea what that means, so let's hope that the excerpt down below is going to give us a little bit of insight. When children fight over a toy... You inevitably hear those words, give it back. We don't like it when people take something that is ours. Ownership is a strange thing and it isn't really what God's kingdom is all about. Jesus said himself that he didn't have a home in which to lay his head. He wasn't about, he wasn't about trying to get stuff for himself. As our example of unconditional love, Jesus showed us a way that is far from our experience today. Try to let go of your ownership of stuff so your hands will be willing to give to those in need. Today's act of kindness is to donate a bag of clothes to the thrift store. Okay, I can get down with that. You know, it's not, it's not cool to be selfish. Yeah, absolutely. I'm all about giving. You know, and it, 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 it's beneficial for the giver and the receiver. So, yeah, guys, that's going to do it for today's reading. Thank you so much for joining me today. Subscribe, hit that bell, do all those things. And today's a good day for a good day. I will see you here tomorrow. Bye.